Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to Let's Try Offworld Trading Company. This just recently hit Steam Early Access, and I don't cover a lot of Early Access games, but I'm very confident in uh, in this game design because I'm very confident in the game designer. This is a game by Soren Johnson. It's actually by his new company, Mohawk Studios, and uh, he is a designer I really, I really do think quite highly of because he was the main AI programmer for Civ 3 and the lead designer of Civilization 4, and I think he's got really got the chops for for strong game design. And everything I've seen for Offworld Trading Company is. is it's telling me that it's going to be a really, really well-designed game. Um, I'm not 100% sold on the longevity of single-player necessarily, but I think the multiplayer is going to be epic. That being said, I think the single-player is, is perfectly fine as well. Um, so let's go ahead and dive back into the game, or dive right into the game. I gotta warn you, the first five... 10-ish minutes of this video might be a little bit heavy on the explanation of how the game works. So if you already know that, you might want to scrub ahead a little bit more, but we'll, we'll go ahead and play. I'm going to drive into single player. There is a campaign mode. I'm going to ignore it for this particular tutorial. I think it's maybe still in a bit of a rough state, just in terms of um, trying to explain to the player exactly what's going on. I think it's got some potential to be particularly fun, um, because it sort of uses the same gameplay rules as multiplayer and quick play, but it's also got this sort of meta campaign on top of it that might be quite cool, but we'll just run into a quick play over here and set things up. One of the things I want to point out is the this game was built from the start to be a multiplayer game. The fact that you got like observe mode and stuff like that, I think uh, is a really good indication of that um, because uh, the game is, you know, it, it's sort of just meant to run kind of, you know, as a server almost with all these things. It supports the AI. The AI in these games are just players that are automated by the computer, and I think that's a really good way to start in game design. It really emphasizes balance, uh, for example. Uh, it is a really cutthroat economic game, is what this is, and um, I, I think it's really quite a throwback to something like Mule, for example. So there are some speed options here. The one the one thing I will say about the pull-down menu is it's a little bit weird, because whatever option is selected isn't in the rest of the list. Obviously, normal should be between slow and fast over here, but it's not. Um, I like AI test. Just like, this is mega crazy speed. You can't even see what's going on on the screen. Uh, obviously, some debugging stuff left in there for early access. And it is still quite early access -y. I'll leave it on normal. There is a difficulty right now. Employee is set between assistant and manager. And I'm not going to lie, it's kind of kicking my ass on this difficulty. Uh, I've gone ahead and completed all the tutorials, which tutorial is like basically a regular game, but it's super low. Uh, I, I would not be surprised if I was showing you a losing game here at employee. I'm sorry. Map size. From tiny all the way to huge. We'll leave it on medium, which is actually pretty roomy so um, these huge maps are going to be pretty crazy but at the same time it supports up to eight players so me plus seven AI for example here I don't know I think the multiplayer also supports up to eight um, but I haven't really tested multiplayer so we're gonna leave out of that I'll be playing some multiplayer campaigns a little later this week so stay tuned resource minimum um, so basically it uh, just affects the amount of uh, resources that are available on the map double normal normal or no minimum whatsoever uh, which means you could run out of something entirely, which would be kind of crazy. And terrain type. This has actually a really, really big impact um, on the game. Now, I don't know what they all map to, but um, which one's the one that's like frosty? I think it might be Plains is quite cold and tends to be a little bit poor on... Um, um, well, at least the map that I just recently played was didn't have any really any three stacks of resources and was quite low on... Oh, geothermal vents might be an example. And then you got volcano, which is like crazy on geothermals, but might be low on other things like water, for instance. I'll go ahead and leave it on... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll do normal for this. Random is quite fun because everyone is really different, but we'll try normal and hope it's a nice middle-of-the-line experience that'll be good for the demonstration. And there's a bunch of different options you can turn on and off as well, which is quite cool. Uh, there's team support. Really, I mean, just, just, just great. Uh, any, any um, complaints I have about the game are like just little, like, not things aren't really explained necessarily. It needs a manual and maybe a little bit more um, sort of pop-ups during the tutorial to tell you what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna pause real quick and talk about this. This is a sort of pre-game mode, and I think it's one of the strongest things in the game. All right, things you gotta know. Let me go ahead and click a couple of times so I've got something to talk about. Low levels of aluminum found. All right, let me pause the game again. A geothermal vent. I like the voiceover. It's kind of cool. Useful. Low I, levels of I don't even found. think they're, um... High levels come of aluminum on. found. All right, she's done now. I don't, I don't even think it's a wave file necessarily. I don't know. It sounds like computer generated voice. It might, they might have a computer voice generation thing in the game. So it's kind of a cool little uh, overlay. All right, so map. It is hex based for one. 
quite varied terrain as well. This represents sort of a, a town that will grow on its own and that will increase demand for certain goods over the course of the game, which is quite nice. Uh, down here, these symbols here represent resources. These gray triangles are carbon. Over here, we've got aluminum. This is actually a geothermal vent. Um, we've got a lot more aluminum there. We've got a little bit of... Um, that is iron. That's just an aluminum cube that's lit up by my scan, for example. There's also water exists as a resource and also silicon. We just haven't uncovered it quite yet. Um, nice little pop up here. So in this pregame, what you're doing is you get these scans. You start off with a certain number of them, and then every so often you get another one. This number will go up over time. But in this multiplayer session, like, and again, it's multiplayer, right? All the players have the same thing. You're scanning around. You're trying to find a good place to site your first headquarters. Also to get a sense of what kind of resources are around, which will impact what kind of headquarters you want to take. For example, three, the, three of the four all use steel as their base resource for building buildings, but scavengers actually use carbon as a base resource. They don't need steel at all. So if you hide a really good source of carbon, you might just go and drop down a scavenger base. But Anyone can drop down a headquarters anytime they want in this phase. So you're trying to scan as quickly as possible, and ideally you want as much information as possible, but you also need to get down your, your headquarters in a reasonable amount of time. If other people get down their base before you, they're going to be mining and building resources while you're still looking around for the perfect spot. What's the, the right time, the right timing? I don't know, we're just gonna have to figure that out as, uh, as things go on. So each one of these guys has a little bit different expansive gets, um, they, their buildings are cheaper and they also get an extra claim. We'll talk about claims once we're in the game. It's really important. Robots don't need food, water, or oxygen. They also don't need glass for their buildings because, you know, robots don't need windows, but they need more electronics. They also use more power instead of fuel. So they're more power dependent. So if you can find a good uh, a geothermal vent location or a couple, that'll really guarantee your power. You can also use uh, solar and wind power as well, but uh, the geothermals are some of the strongest. The scavengers, let you do more crazy stuff on the black market, for example. But the big thing with them is they use carbon instead of steel, which is very sexy. Uh, scientific buildings, um, the, the first thing, buildings over resources will use those resources and input. It's a little hard to explain right now, but it's pretty cool. And then they tech more and they're less susceptible to sabotage. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more scanning and try to find something. Obviously, um, my ability to pause here in these single player games gives me a bit of an edge over the AI because I can try to pick and choose a little bit more. But in a multiplayer setting, like this is crazy. This is um. Very strong location. I kind of want to do one more scan here. We've got some water. Okay, some very interesting tiles here. Oh, but it's carbon and aluminum. Ooh. Sometimes you get these doubled up. These ones are very good because... Um, so there's not like a building that you build to get aluminum. There's a metal mining building, which will do both aluminum and iron. And if they happen to be in the same square, you get them both. You'll notice the different sizes of cubes over here. This affects the rate at which you get it. So this one here, I think will give me aluminum three times as fast as this one. So generally speaking, you want to build on these bigger ones, but sometimes, um, especially if they're really close to your base and nothing else is around, you're, you're fine with just the one. It's not the end of the world. So these will give me both aluminum and iron when I mine it, which is really good. This will not give me both aluminum and carbon because the building that gives me carbon is different. It's not a metal mining one, it's called um, uh, Elemental Quarry or something like that. So carbon and silicon comes from those quarries here. I feel like this is a pretty good spot. I don't know what kind of headquarters I might want. I'm tempted to go scientific uh, so that I can get some easier glass furnaces going right over there, which would be quite cool. Um, and actually, I think that might not be a bad idea because I can even put steel mills on top of these two. I'm going to go ahead and do that. It'll be interesting to talk about a few things. Ah, scientific is a little weird. Expansive is the most normal, and I, I'm wondering if I might want to just do that. I would like to find a bigger stack of steel uh, before I lock in. Tell you what, let me do one more scan here. As soon as it kicks in to see what's down there. That's just more carbon. What about over here? I'm, I'm taking a big risk here. There we go. High levels of iron. Great. I'm just going to go ahead and play as expansive then. Now, when I actually place my things, what are you looking for? You want a fair amount of empty space around. You can see you can't build on hills or slopes or anything like that. So you want some empty space around you because you're actually going to want to build production buildings connected to your headquarters most of the time. Um, and ideally, you'd also want to be close to the resources. Um, this might be okay, but the other thing to note is if I were to build on a resource, it actually instantly transfers a bunch of the resources into my bank. Now, it does um, it does remove them from the map, so they will then be gone. I can't mine them after the fact, but if I did this, I could start with 80 aluminum in the bank, and this is not somewhere I'm necessarily looking to... Um, 
I wouldn't be mining these like one stacks of bloom and I don't need to mine them. I've got three and two stacks over here. On the other hand, this crater may not give me a lot of room to build. Okay, not gonna lie. Um, the game crashed. I think right clicking on that scan screen uh, causes some issues. I haven't had the game crash at all in a couple hours of gameplay, but uh, right clicking accidentally on that, uh, that preload screen crashed the game. So this is a different map, obviously, but I've gone ahead and plopped down new headquarters. I actually just ate a bunch of single silicon things. I'm hoping that there's going to be some more of it. I kind of like this spot overall. We've got a nice triple stack of iron over here and a little bit more down there so we can actually get some crazy steel industry going on. We also have a big stack of carbon, uh, which is interesting. It's not as important, but there we go. All right, I'm going to keep the game paused. The AI actually hasn't settled yet in this game a lot of times they they will but i was able to find a good spot i was happy with relatively quickly let's talk about the screen we've got money top left corner these are funds that you use to sort of more actively buy things but there's also this debt field over here which is kind of interesting sometimes you won't um you'll need resources but um what's what am i trying to say here we can see a bunch of different resources and three of them, water, food, and oxygen, I'm currently consuming already because my headquarter itself consumes it. If I run out of my quantity over here, I will automatically buy these resources from the market at whatever the market price is. And that will actually go to my debt instead of my funds. Every night you do pay 10% um, on your debt, but it basically acts like a credit card, for example, to quickly buy things off and... Um, and give you the ability to spend money even if you don't have any cash over here. Same thing with power. If you run a power deficit, it will go up against your debt. Um, if you sell goods back to the market, it will first go to pay off your debt and then it will go and start increasing your funds. Um, and, and so there's there's different mechanics for managing that. And I think it's one of the, the many, many beautiful game design decisions that were made here uh, because normally there's just the one money meter and it goes positive or negative and it sort of limits some of the interaction possibilities but now there's there's a real different you will sometimes find yourself with like 30,000 funds and 30,000 debt and you won't necessarily want to pay off the debt because you're going to want those funds around to do something else the very important thing over here is the claims I'm allowed three claims on this planet right now which is to say I can put down three buildings effectively and a big part of the game is leveling up your headquarter. Every time you level up your headquarter, you get additional claims. You can see here when I upgrade this, I will get five new claims. I think this includes the claim that the expansive groups get. Um, I think normally you might get four and expansion gets the extra one, which makes it five. Or it might be the other way around. I might actually get six when I level up, but I'm pretty sure I will actually get five. Um, so we've got a we got three buildings to build. What are we going to do? There's some power over here, some geothermals. Um, so I got a few options. The a, the interface over here is when you mouse over a resource, it shows you the buildings that allow you to produce that resource. If you don't like that mechanic, you can always just toggle them on. But it actually works pretty well, so I'm going to leave that off. Um, we, we don't have any power right now, and we will start to consume it soon. But right now it's pretty cheap, so I'm not going to rush to buy any power things. Um, upgrading my HQ, and I actually have enough to upgrade right now. And why is that? Well, I have all the glass I need. I need 20, and I have 20. I actually have, I think, 25 glass. I do. Um, I also need some aluminum and steel. Now, I don't have enough of those two, but I do have enough funds to purchase the missing set. So I could upgrade right now. However, then I'd be kind of in a screwed position. It's probably better to um, use my resources to buy, to build buildings, especially since I currently have claims. Leveling up, the only thing it does is it gives you more claims. It also actually increases your water, food, and oxygen consumption. So, you know, who wants that? So one of the things I like to do early on is get a steel industry going on, obviously, unless I'm playing as the scavengers. So a steel mill consumes iron um, in exchange in, uh, to produce steel. So one unit of iron produces a half unit of steel. And it'll do that, you know, every game tick, however much that is. So it seems like the first thing we may want to do is actually build an iron mine. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. This tile actually has both iron and a little bit of water. I, I won't be able to work both. It's going to be one or the other. I will go ahead and put a metal mine on this triple stack of iron. It will give me two units of iron per tick, uh, which means this is actually going to be enough to supply two steel mills. I will build one right away. And the game is still paused right now. I'm going to go ahead and unpause it. And what you'll see is going to happen. Some buildings are going to get there and claim this land. You can see my border actually shows up around it. Even if this building gets destroyed, I will never lose this claim. It will always be my land. But at the same time, there's, as far as I can tell, there's no way for me to release that claim either. I could, I can scrap a building if I want some of the resources back, but I don't think I can unclaim something. So you really have to think about what's going on. You can see the AI is settling things. Um, these names represent the sort of um, 
style of AI, so Ms. Entertainer or Mr. Entertainment will probably build a lot of the pleasure domes, for example, uh, and try to make some money from tourism. But also, they've got different types. You've got two scientific types and one scavenger type. No robots at all. So actually, that means um, no one doesn't need glass. So glass is going to be a pretty valuable thing. I actually plop down a lot of silicon. I'm hoping that we will just get lucky and a big stack of silicon will be revealed. We may need to go and build on some of these single silicon sites, which would be quite poor. Uh, what else do I want to do? Do I need carbon right away? Like, there's a nice big carbon quarry over here, but I'm not sure that's a priority. Aluminum, on the other hand... Oh, I think there was a big stack of aluminum over here. Aluminum, on the other hand, is extraordinarily valuable because you do need it early on. There's some single aluminum cubes over there. I'm hoping... And the Fog of War will keep pushing out. I'm hoping... Oh, and someone grabbed the triple stack of uh, carbon right away. Interesting. Medium there we go. There's a two stack of aluminum. It's not great, but we're going to go ahead and go for it over there. It kind of sucks that it's so High far, which will require so a little bit more fuel, I believe. Um, but, you know, them's the brakes. Now, notice these things have to fly around. If uh, Orange here, who's that? Mr. Entertainment had sent out a ship to this aluminum site and it got there first, he would have actually claimed that. This will use up all three of my claims, and that's going to be okay. The steel is, is very important. Remember, we need aluminum, steel, and glass to level up. I could go ahead and do that now if I'm willing to spend and buy uh, the missing materials at market rate. The aluminum is going to be quite cheap, but it's the one I need the most of. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and upgrade it right away. So I've got my five claims. Bam. What am I going to do with the claims? Well, all right. So some of the silicon is there. I think I'm going to want to get a glass industry going on as quickly as possible. So I'm going to do that and maybe power as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop down a silicon thing over here. I actually have quite a bit in the bank right now because I plopped down on a bunch of silicon, which maybe I shouldn't have. I'm gonna go ahead and put down a glass furnace over here, and we're gonna talk about how the goods move around. I think I'm gonna put down a second one. Whoa, first auction. Pirates, ooh. I'm gonna skip on getting the pirates right now. They're very interesting because you plop them down somewhere, and these lines here that show the, uh, the path, that uh, things get trans transferred along, you can actually basically steal goods. Some go to the pirates and some go to the person running the pirates. So you can see, yeah, you can see these ships going back and forth. Let's, so let's talk about how the goods will go. Right over here at my metal mine, um, every it's got at the bottom counter there, it says 10 of 20. If we let it go, it'll go up. Um, every time it hits 20, it will send a transport ship to my headquarters and drop off the iron, in which case we'll see it go up right over here. In a second, there we go, went up to 70. However, you will never see a ship go from my headquarter to my steel mill over here. And the reason is that um, because it's touching my base, the goods will automatically be moved. There, there's no need to, to send a, um, a transport ship there at all, which is kind of nice. I'm going to go ahead and I need more steel. Once I do, I will go ahead and drop a power plant on this geothermal vault. Because right now, energy is worth 41 a unit and rising. And um, I'm having to pay for that power right the now. Black market and is online. All right. And um, A, if I have power, I don't have to pay for that, but actually I sell it back to the grid and therefore use it as a way to turn a profit, which is pretty goddamn nice. Deal is going up. Is there anything I want to sell? You know what? I'm going to go ahead and sell a little bit of glass right now, pick things up, which actually gives me enough for a pleasure dome. I'll have to buy the electronic components, but I'm okay with that. A pleasure dome might not give me tons of money right now, but it will add up over time. Basically, from this town over here, there's a certain amount of tourism potential that happens, and um, everyone who's got a pleasure dome gets a cut of that tourism potential. So, and, and as the town grows, you'll get a bit more money. I think that's a fine way to go, actually. And then I still want to go and build this geothermal plant. I am out of funds. My debt is going up because I'm paying for power mostly, although I am paying a little bit for water, food, oxygen, and fuel. But we're just going to wait until we crew enough steel and we should be in fine, fine shape. There we go. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll get some power. We'll be able to sell the excess back to the network and make a little bit of bucks. My pleasure dome is almost done. Let's see how much money it makes right from the start. Oh, making 84, oh, 42 bucks. I think someone else built one. Hang on. Is there a way to find that out? There might be a display for it. Mm, I don't know why it suddenly, it, why it changed. Maybe something happened in the population or, or maybe it was just, it took a second for it to register properly uh, what the actual amount is. Okay, we can see here, my glass furnace says it needs oxygen, O2. Because to make glass, you need both silicone and oxygen. Um, and by default, your factories won't buy any off the market. Right now, the oxygen is half the price of glass. And I need 
quarter unit of, of oxygen to make one unit of glass. So it seems like it's well worthwhile to tell it to start auto supplying itself. So all my oxygen or glass furnaces will now automatically go and um, purchase any oxygen they need to produce it. So we'll be producing glass. There's actually a shortage in glass right now. So the price is going up, which means I'm gonna wait for that green arrow to get away, which shows me that shortage, which is a random event. Once that maxes out, I'm gonna go ahead and sell all my glass. Even though I need it for an upgrade, I'm gonna sell it when it's high. There we go. And now the price is gradually going to go down. It went down suddenly when I sold it, but it will also gradually go down as the uh, the shortage event um, goes away. I'll actually just go ahead and keep selling while I wait. I have no more claims. I can't build anything. Oh, an auction for a claim. I'm going to see if I can get that. I don't have a ton of money. It's going to be expensive. Oof. But an extra claim is super valuable because, again, the only way you can get claims is by leveling it up. And there's a little display. I'm going to go ahead and build a second glass furnace um, right away. Which I think will break me even on the silicone because I think I'm getting one per tick over here and I'm consuming a half a unit of silicone. Oh no, a full unit. Ooh, so I will need a second mine. No, we still haven't found a bigger source of silicone standard. on this map, have we? Oh, there's, oh, there's actually quite a bit down here. Oh, but I'm out of claims. Uh, upgrade. Let's go for it. Yeah, I had to pay for the glass when it was super expensive, but I wanted the rush. I want to grab that triple stack right away. In fact, I'm also going to grab the double stack because I feel that I will end up with a pretty good um, monopoly on the silicone. It's tough to say, actually, because I'm saying this. The scientific ones can just drop their glass furnaces directly on there. And, mm, you know what? Hold on. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to cancel that claim tile. I won't claim it. I'll just put the triple stack down. Hope that's good enough. It does have to go a long way, but that's okay. These guys need oxygen. And because I have no funds, it's not buying oxygen. In fact, our debt is going up. We are making some money over here, which is good. I'll go ahead and sell a bunch of glass. Now I'll have enough to buy that. And there we go. All right, now I have to decide what I am going to do next. An excellent question. Carbon, the price is going up. Oh, it's just a shortage right now, so it's not the end of the world. Um, I got four more claims. Power generation. Other people are generating power. We're actually a little short on power, though. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and build a second geothermal plant. Because I think... Oh, no, there's a lot of geothermals. I was going to say, I'll get a monopoly over it. Eh, I mean, I say a lot. I think there's only the four, which is not that many. Someone built a solar panel way over here. Um, reasonable. Reasonable, reasonable. Do I need a little bit of carbon? I guess a little bit wouldn't hurt. Let's go ahead and grab that spot before someone else does. We'll start to accumulate it. Steel, price is high. We've got a couple of steel mills. Uh, we are breaking even on iron. There's not really another iron spot for us. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this water spot here. It's close. I don't want anyone else to beat me to it. Oh my god, I just got EMP'd. <laughs> so down here in the black market, there's all the dirty stuff you can do. Um, and the AI will happily do it to you as well. Is there anything along the map that I'd want to AMP or something to screw up? Not yet, but it's starting to be really tempting. You know what the power's so high? Let's go ahead and uh, actually dynamite that thing. We purchased it. We're going to blow it up. There's a cooldown timer on how much and when you can buy from the uh, black market. Also, every time someone buys something. I don't know if it's every time someone or just me buys something. Like... A, an individual player buys it, the price goes up. One of the really valuable ones is this goon squad. You can put it somewhere and then it'll protect the buildings from sabotage, but obviously the cost does uh, go up over time. We are still crushing the glass thing. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You'll notice if you build um, buildings adjacent to others of the same type, there's a boost. Slant drilling. I will skip the slant drilling, but it is kind of interesting that it lets you mine in adjacent tiles. Really quite cool. We can also go ahead and research or build a patent lab. Um, which, instead of waiting for an auction, we could actually just research our own. Oh, we are out of claims. Never mind. Let's not do that. Um, I do have a lot of aluminum. Uh, oh, not enough for the upgrade. I actually need 240 aluminum and 120 steel. So we will wait for that and not sell any. I don't need the carbon right now. Ooh, the price is going down. Let's go ahead and sell what I've got in terms of carbon. Glass, I have way more than I need. I only need 60, so let's go ahead and sell 100 make lots of money. It actually gives me enough to go and afford the next upgrade. Which wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm going to go... You can also buy more claims from the black market. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and buy the extra claim here. That's going to be really handy. Oh my god, my shit's being EMP'd over here too. My power generation got EMP'd, which is really, really brutal. Am I... Eh, I'm doing okay. Mr. Entertainment is actually doing by far the best. We should probably slow him down. It'd be nice to go ahead and fuck up his uh, wind 
generators over here, which will charge him a lot of money. Um, you know what? Go ahead and build that patent lab now that I have the extra resource, which I've actually never done. So we're going to go I and uh, experience that together. Actually, I have used a patent lab because when I bought out other companies, they had one. So then I just started using theirs. But um, I don't know how much of a priority it is to research some of the tech. It's not as critical as you might think from other games. We are out of money. There we go. Go back to buying that. This was actually destroyed. The Pleasure Dome, he actually blew it up. You bastard. I don't have any electronics. I'm going to have to buy those. Uh, what would you need for electronics factory? Aluminum, carbon, and silicone. You know what? We won't quite have the silicone uh, advantage anymore, but let's get started with the electronics early. They're worth a lot of money. I don't have any claims, right? Let's wait on that. Um, patent lab. So, different kind of technologies we can work, which is fun. Um, more profit from Pleasure Dome. We're going to go ahead and grab that and try to keep the Pleasure Dome thing rocking and rolling. We'll have to repair it. Uh, it still looks like we have a monopoly on the Pleasure Dome, so there's a good potential for money there. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab... Ooh, the Goon Squad's expensive. And say I wanted to Goon Squad one of my power things just to uh, give it some immunity there. I'm going to go ahead and take the, uh, the headquarters upgrade. There we go. we got six claims now. We'll be able to ship more industries off Earth in no time. Uh, yeah, electronic factory. I'm good with it. So I'm going to go and put it down, say, over here. Trying to make things not too contiguous so that they can't be EMP'd quite as much. I'll go ahead and drop another one. Oh, I don't have the money for the goods. I will put down another elemental quarry. I'm going to split these up. What's this for? Claim. Um, no, I, I, I'm going to skip this one. And apparently I don't have enough. What am I doing my steel? Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm getting more stuff blown up. This AI, here I was thinking I was on easy difficulty. It's being brutal. And Mr. Entertainment is very rapidly uh, running away with the game here, which is double plus ungood. Uh, we have a mutiny at this power station. See, you remember when I wanted to uh, put a goon squad on there? Also notice the cost going up. Um, mutiny is really bad because not only does it shut it down for me, but it actually tr uh, gives control of it to someone else, Scientific which is really frustrating. Expanded. Oh, here's what I need. I need an electrolysis reactor, which will convert water into fuel, um, which is going to be really, really good. We need to sell off a bunch of glass, so we've got some money again. Please and thank you. Because I need fuel. It's worth quite a bit. Also produces oxygen, which I have a shortage of and is worth quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and drop a second one of those down there. That'll be a good way to make money. And um, can we repair this? Thank you. And then, yes, I want to put down another source of silicone. And I'm not going to have them next to one another. Didn't, did that double get taken? Oh, it never did. Hold on. Stop, Scientific stop, 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 stop. Expanded. Cancel. We're going to take this one down instead. Bam. And because it's adjacent to the other one, I'll actually get a combo bonus. Why did they build here? Why do you build a quarry here instead of there? This one is distinctly better. That seems like some sort of AI fail. Unless the thing with the lower difficulty is they put in, like, the AI will sometimes randomly grab the wrong thing. Someone here is grabbing a bunch of what I consider to be rightfully mine tiles, but, you know, what the hell. At least if I get EMP'd over here, I won't be the only one. Oh, and speaking of, so you over here, buddy boy, who's running away with the game, I'm going to purchase an EMP and then deploy it right here, which will turn off all your power generators right now while the power is worth 280 a unit. Holy crap. Okay, there's more geothermals over here, right? Clearly, we're going to want that. Let you know what? I'm going to take... Screw with us. And we screw with I'm going to have a monopoly over um, this. I'm going to go ahead and buy the missing steel right now. Steel's not horribly expensive. I'm going to grab both geothermals. A, it'll prevent them from shutting down everything. Look, I've got, I'm EMP'd and frozen. Like, or mutinied and EMP'd at the same time. Brutal. So this will protect me because I can't lose all my power. No one else can grab these geothermals, which means they will always have to buy power. Meanwhile, I can sell it for 300 bucks a unit. Look at this, we're losing tons of money right now. That will fix itself. I am behind on the stock price right now just because of the power situation. I better start paying off my debt as soon as I can, but I don't know why they're focusing me. Not fair. Oh, you have double pleasure domes. Oh, someone's buying sh uh, shares of my stock because my shares are weak. My debt is going crazy. It's this power. I'm spending thousands, thousands. There we go. My power situation is finished. Now I will no longer drive into debt and I should actually start turning a profit. But unless I can uh, protect myself by buying some stock, I'm going to lose the game relatively soon. 
what I would also like to do... I'm going to skip the pirates, but I'm going to power surge right here. So I hit the Pleasure Dome and a couple of his power sources. i got to slow down Mr. Entertainment. He's running away with the game. What are these? Steel mills, okay. No, I don't want the pirates. Thank you. All right, I'm now making 750 bucks a tick. So my debt is going to drop super fast. What sucks is every night I pay 10% debt. So I'm actually going to hit 10,000 bucks in interest tonight. Now, I should be able to spend it down really quickly, but my God, that was brutal. Of course, the price of energy will drop over time as well. I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to sell off some stuff. Even some silicone. It's worth nothing, but let's go crazy with these sales. All the electronics. I'm going to sell off some carbon, sell off a bunch of steel, sell off, I don't know, all my aluminum. Um, and a good chunk of fuel as well, just so that I can pay off as much debt as possible here, right before midnight. Uh, oh, hold shift. That's handy. Thank you. You know what? As much as I can. Just like that. And then we'll get our interest tick. Oh, no, the EMPs! Fucking hell. Sell all my glass off. You douchebags. Oh my god, I don't like this difficulty. People are too mean. This is what multiplayer is going to be like, by the way. <laughs> it's going to be brutal. We have my iron over here. Price for iron is quite low. I think I'm getting plenty. Um, it's hard to tell because I'm all being EMP'd right now. Can I hit anything back? No, 10 second cooldown left. Um, what else could I build? A hacker array, which lets me manipulate prices a little bit. Maybe. All right, we have lots of carbon. I don't have to worry about that. Um, another electronics factory market. might be a good idea. Yes. Let me do that. Oh, I need more claims, which I don't have. Black market's back on. I could spend a bunch of money on the claim. I will skip it, though. I will go and instead fuck around with him a little bit more. Do I want him to destroy things, or do I just... You know, let's just EMP right here, because it'll turn off all his power. I'm really hoping it bankrupts him. The price for power is dropping quickly, mostly because I'm dumping so much of it in there. In fact, the price for power will probably go to next Scientific to nothing soon. Expanded. Um, I mean, I could I could change the auto. I could turn off all the selling, selling. I could do all kinds of different things. I could, like, just try to focus everyone's power and turn off auto selling, so then they'll be paying 500 bucks a unit. But I also can sell all the excess here, so I'll put up with it. Um, zero debt. Funds are going up. Um, should I start to buy some of these fuckers out? Let's see. Uh, well, I'm not going to do this. I need more aluminum. It's price for aluminum. Actually, relatively high. Who's got aluminum mines? There's a great question. Can I find that out? I don't know. We've got... This is Mr. Launch. He's got two of them over here. They're only level one. Because whoever I buy out, um, I will get their stuff. Is there... It doesn't look like there's a giant pile of aluminum everywhere at a glance. Or anywhere at a glance, I should say. Um, so I think I actually would want to target this guy. Oh, my patent lad isn't doing anything. Um, the energy vault might not be a terrible idea. Well, it matters a little less here. Less sabotage damage for buildings adjacent to me. You do have to spend money for this. Um, well, mostly I did because I didn't have any chemicals. But it's worthwhile. Actually, the price for chemicals is so high. Let's get that going. It eats fuel and carbon. Um, I actually have a little bit of an excess of both, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I don't have any claims. Right, right, right. Uh, let's start working on Mr. Launch over here and see what we can do. Stock price goes up as people buy things. I'm making a fair amount from these pleasure domes. Of course, everyone's got a little bit of pleasure domage. Are we getting more mutinies? Mutiny med geothermal, but that's okay. I've got, I've got an excess of them. Yeah, so the price for the power is going down a lot because I'm producing a lot of extra power, but I, d I never want to get in that other situation again. Um, we could upgrade. We need mostly aluminum is what we're waiting for. I do have an aluminum chest. Not much. All a bunch of glass. Oh my god, the silicone's worth more than the glass right now? Chemicals. Ooh, there was an increase in price. Blow away some of our carbon. Let's buy a claim and then use that to drop down another aluminum mine. Oh, someone else just picked one up. I think that one was free a second ago. I might be wrong. Let's get a little bit more in here. This Aluminum is mostly an early game resource. Unlock it and you... Oh, I really want to not allow this guy to get that. Because I don't want him to be able to bypass the power requirement. I'm just forcing him to pay more. 
12,000. All right. Fuck it. That's fine. You can have that. You don't so actually own any of your stock. It's actually going to be easier to buy out Mr. Entertainment. Maybe I'll, get, I'll start on him. Let me sell that. Now, selling stocks does trigger a cooldown. Um, that way you can't just have a big pile of money in like defensive stocks and suddenly sell it and then buy a bunch. Do that. Sell off some more glass. Sell off a bunch of silicon. I have it. The price is quite high. Um, colony expanded. Still need more aluminum. Luckily, I do have two sources of it now. Don't I? No! This is a carbon plant. Did I never have an aluminum thing going on? Is that what's going on? I think that's probable. Yeah, because I'm only making one right now. I don't have anything blown up. I didn't have any aluminum. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, well, we're just going to have to spend a bunch of money to buy the missing aluminum. Get an upgrade. Seven claims now. This is working. That's good. Uh, chemicals are super valuable, so let's go ahead and get going with a chem lab kind of setup. Um, and not go. Oh, a second one. These need H2O. Start auto supply. Can we buy water somewhere? Is there any stack of water left anywhere? No. What we can do, though, is we can put down ice condensers. They're not quite as strong. They've got to be constructed on ice. How is that not ice? I'm confused. This looks like ice to me. Maybe it's snow. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, yeah, we are paying a lot for the water. Also, food. Um, the problem is... I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Well, that's not entirely true. These two buildings are mine. This is a water pump, which is good. Uh, we're using the water to make chemicals, aren't we? We will. Um, which is fine. Maybe two of them is going to be too much. I'm going to cancel construction of one. You can auto supply yourself. Your the chemicals are worth so much that it's worth buying water to convert into chemicals, one way or another. That's okay. And then we've got the fuel. Actually, we've got to turn off our fuel converters. What do they look like? It's these things here. Turn off. Uh, turn off. Turn off all of them. So right now the fuel is worth less than water. So we don't want to convert our water into fuel. That is stupid and bad, and why our debt. Just went bananas. Also, we're not making any money from power anymore. So here's what I'm going to do at this point. I'm going to go ahead and stop settling. We'll keep manipulating it. Hopefully the price will go up, because right now everyone's basically getting free power at a dollar per. So I'm really worried here. Mr. Entertainment's stock price is going crazy. I don't know why people aren't targeting him. I was being targeted by crazy. He's got a little goon squads for defenses. Uh, you need O2 which sell off our glass here. Sell off a bunch of chemicals. At least the price for that is really, really high. We're short on fuel. Like, we're spending so much on fuel. We're getting our water back, which is nice. Let's then sell off some of our water. Oops, we had to buy a tick. I forgot about that. Did that wrong. But, um... Seven thousand. What is we bidding for? Iron. Um, actually, could theoretically Eight use thousand. iron. The double time. Yeah. Let's do it. 16, 000, I think I'm going to lose this game. But that's fine. There we go. So it gives me that plot. I still have to build the mine on it. Well, that's all right. Those are turned off. Unused tiles. Well, no. Interesting. There's two of them. Oh, I have an unused tile over here, right from when I cancelled things. I still have, like, an unbelievable amount of claims. I... We've got nothing for water. We, yeah, we would get lines if we did. Um, what I could do is cancel this iron mine for a little bit of extra water. Iron's not worth that much. It's only worth 19. You know what? We're going to do that. You over here, I'm going to scrap you, which sounds crazy, a, a three-tile slot for, in exchange for a two-tile slot, but at least they'll get a, an adjacency bonus, which is really nice. Get some extra water out of there, which right now is worth worth so much. Worth huge amounts. Um, carbon is worth... Why is carbon worth so much? Sell that off. Sell off a bunch of chemicals. Thank you very much. Uh, electronics are worth lots. Oh, what we need to do is get our off-world shipment thing going on. 
uh, which I should have maybe put on the existing Your claim stock tile. Is being Doesn't really stock matter. Is being bought. People are buying my shares of stock. I need to maybe buy a little bit more defensively, just to make sure. Then, Mr. Entertainment, well, we'll get back to you. So these spaceships are really important because it gives you so much more money. In fact, we may not want to sell things directly to the market anymore if we can help it. Let's go ahead and sell some water. Ooh, I accidentally shift clicked, so I'm going to have to buy a tick back. Kind of sucks, but that's all right. Uh, pay off some of our debt so we don't get interest quite as much. I think we're going to be fine here. Price for power is still basically non-existent, which kind of sucks. Uh, water is still worth more than fuel, so I'm not going to produce fuel. Although I don't remember, what's the conversion rate? Shit, someone else has got their spaceship going already. But the end game is already here. We're going to get defeated momentarily. You're going to see these space shipments are insanely, insanely valuable. Um, sell a little bit, just so that we can keep buying what we're missing. Still have an excess of power, and power is basically free right now. Push comes to shove. I could always dismantle one of my geothermal plants and put something else there with a claim. But I have extra claims and nothing to do with it. Um... We need more fuel as well. Okay, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to turn on the fuel reactors because we're actually going to get good value out of them. Because now we have the off-world market. What I can do, assuming I get um, 100 or something and then 20 fuel. Oh, someone's pumping up the cost of uh, glass. I'm going to sell this uh, right away. Because you can sell it off-world to another planet and, tent, uh, and you make a lot of money doing that. Your stock you can see here, I, I don't make much from the silicon, I don't think, but I think I make a lot more over here. Some people are buying my stock, I don't have any fuel, the game is slowing down for some reason. I'm trying to produce fuel, but it's being used up too quickly. Um, what I will do very quickly is buy 20 and ship out this silicon that I wouldn't actually be able to turn a profit for any other way. And let's see. It'll cost me 5,000 of fuel, but then I will make a revenue of 20,000 doing this. So let's buy a bunch of fuel and ship out a bunch. I don't want to use repeat launch. I, I don't know if this is a glitch right now, but these will actually launch, I think, simultaneously. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. If you do different types of rockets, they will, they will keep queuing up. One's buying all my stock. I'm actually probably going to lose because right now they're making huge amounts of money with every spaceship that goes out. So you get massive injections of cash. So I might have to defensively buy a little bit more stock just to make sure I don't just insta-lose here. Sold. I'm waiting for my first ship to go. It'll be fine as soon as my first ship goes. I think I might just lose, you guys. It's too bad the power's not worth anything. Yeah, it's, it's being stuck at one, even though I'm not auto-selling. I guess I don't know, I'll make like $3 from auto-selling. Wait for the first ship to go and hope that I don't lose in the meantime. Uh, let's sell off all these chemicals. And the glass and Your the electronics. Yeah, see, people are buying my stock. There, I'll buy a little bit more. Try to push it out of range of being purchased is what I'm trying to do here. And then I'm going to keep trying to ship out the stuff that's um, otherwise maybe cheap. Cross my fingers. All right, this is working. Since it goes, it'll be a 20 grand chunk. Might be other ways of doing it, like... Maybe it is better to ship the expensive stuff, but it's kind of a weird interface. If I do this, I think they will be sequential. Alright. Ship some aluminum into space. No, maybe it was just that one game. It must have been a glitch in the... Um... Yeah. Okay. Hang on. There is definitely a glitch. Let me... Um... I can't. Sell something else. Sell this. Sell carbon. There was a glitch in the other game where it could run a, these things in parallel. That is no longer the case. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Because I'm, I'm basing all this. Whoa. I don't know why it's gotten so laggy. Um, I'm basing this be what I'm doing here with these cues based on the fact that in the tutorial that I was running, it was basically shooting them all off at once. Um, which kind of felt like a glitch, and apparently it was. You need a lot of electronics, and electronics are expensive. I don't need any chemicals, though, right? I can keep selling these things. Oh my god, it's going so slow. Sell the steel. Sell some extra aluminum. Off-world shipment launched. Look all right. at all the money. Yay, money. Alright, so we're going to build a second one of these bad boys, then. It's going to cost us a lot of money. 
That'd be well worthwhile. Just try to ship things out as quickly as possible. Um, how's the price of steel or iron? Okay, iron is cheaper than steel, so we'll get that going. That's fine. You can see some of these things have been turned off, which I guess might save a little bit of power. Not that power is a cost. Like, I don't necessarily need... Oh, right, I can click on here to find things. I forgot about that. That is so useful. God, it's the little things that are just awesome. Um, like, I do have unlimited amounts of silicon. Right now, I don't think they use anything. They use a little bit of power. I'll turn off one. No, what, what do I need to save power for? I have unlimited power. Turn on. Never mind. We can at least sell the silicon for something. And practically nothing, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. All right, just waiting for the second one to go. We will fire another rocket into space. But you can see at this point now, everyone is firing rockets into space and trying to win the game. Um, I should have gotten Off mine going a little bit sooner. Launched. But yeah, these um, the side by side. Let's just look at the price of fuel because everyone's having to tr pay for tons of fuel. On the bright side, the fuel is so expensive. I'm happy I'm producing a little bit of it. Um, oh no, I was going to EMP someone. <sighs> well, at least I got uh, paid out. So there we go. So the AI um, is actually pretty effective. This was on level three. Now I think on higher levels, it's not necessarily the AI is smarter. I think at a certain point, like I think at the lower point, they intentionally try to make the AI dumb and make mistakes and not use all the tricks. Uh, but as, there's a certain level, and it might be an employee, I don't know, where the AI now is like at full intelligence. It will do everything that it possibly can. Um, but then it starts to get an advantage. Like the AI may get some free money, for example, um, to offset the fact that generally speaking, the AI will, can never be as smart as a human, although clearly they did a pretty good job in this game. Anyway, um, I definitely recommend you keep an eye out in this game. It is still early access. Not everything is perfect. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of rebalancing, and every now and again there's a little bit of UI weirdness. And there was that one crash that I experienced doing the recording earlier, but um, overall, I got to say, the uh, I, I, I'm really quite keen on the game, and uh, I will definitely be playing it some more. Specifically, there will be some multiplayer coming up relatively soon. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.